everyone. Today we will be studying about the viscous flow in circular pipe or what are the reaction about the viscosity or when the flow is viscous that is the flow is having a very low velocity. What are the changes we can see within a circular pipe? So, first of all you can see that uh, viscous flow occurs at a very very low velocity and then you can see at very low velocity the fluid moves in a layers layer pattern and here you can see if the flow is being viscous or at very low velocity this is the pattern fluid follows and here you can see and here you can see that one layer of the fluid slides over the adjacent one and due to this slide or due to this movement there is a relative existence of velocity gradient and hence that velocity gradient is nothing but rate of change of deformation or rate of change of shear strain which you obtain will be enhanced or will be calculated with the help of the shear stress acting on that particular layer or you can see if we calculate like this, this is the u plus dy and dy is the depth if you see and here it is u then you will be noticing that del u over del y will be directly proportional to the shear stress you have obtained and it is the same equation which we have previously gone and started with the properties of fluid, one of the properties of fluid was viscosity, viscous term is from the same property and we have calculated, we have reduced this visco uh, proportionality sign and written with a constant mu del u over del y. Mu is nothing but the term viscosity. Here you can say we need to calculate about all the parameters about the change in pressure, about the shear stress, about the velocity distribution. Uh, among the velocity distribution you need to calculate at which point or at what discharge velocity will be maximum or velocity will be uh, average and then you need to calculate mathematically you need to understand while the flow is flowing through a uh, pipe with diameter d now what is the v max how you are supposed to calculate with d diameter what is the velocity maximum velocity this that particular fluid of the pipe will be obtaining and there you can see and in which now the condition is that in that circular pipe the flow will be viscous viscous means velocity is already very very low and at low velocity you can see that the fluid flow moves in layer by layer and one layer is adjacent to the other one and this due to this pattern uh, rate of shear stress is being enhanced or covered up by the velocity gradient. So, let us see what are the cases for viscous flow, well, let us see what are the cases for viscous flow in the fluid and there you can see there can be two normal cases where you can see once normal the flu flow of viscous fluid through a circular pipe and again there can be another set of thing where you can see there can be two parallel plates <coughs> which you can see if you are having two parallel plates let us suppose this is a plate number 1 and then a plate number 2 if between these two parallel plate you can see if the fluid is flowing in a laminar flow or viscous flow is flowing then what are the parameters we are going to suppose we are going to calculate for that flow between those plates. So, first beginning with the flow of viscous fluid through circular pipe, uh, the most simple and practical case of laminar flow is the steady laminar flow. Through a, throughout that a straight line of path is being followed by the cross section let us suppose A having diameter D. Now, let us consider a pipe of radius capital R and on in a straight of line L. This is the circular path, this is the circular cross section you have seen, then we have considered it is having a radius r 
and then next suggestion you have seen it is straight and length is L. Now, we have marked the length of this as L. Another one, let us consider the viscosity of the fluid flowing over is mu and it is having a steady volumetric rate of flow as Q, where Q is nothing but rate of flow. Now, let us consider for the equilibrium or we already know for the equilibrium condition all the forces acting on that elemental fluid with respect to the pressure it is getting should be equivalent to 0 or you can say summation of net forces should be 0. So, here you can see we have an assumption we are now going to make uh, derive mathematically how the viscous flow within a circular pipe makes changes with respect to pressure, velocity or shear stress we will make one by one and for that assumptions for that uh, derivation we have seen that we have concluded that there is a uh, circular pipe of length capital L and it is having a diame uh, diameter of capital D or we have taken in terms of radius and radius is capital R that is the thing we have taken and here you can see we have again made a thing then since it is having a length L, we can uh, conclude or we can consider or calculate for an elemental fluid and then can integrate the same for the entire span of the fluid flowing through the circular pipe R. Now, we have considered a small elemental fluid of radius small r you can see this is a radius small r already written and the distance of this elemental fluid is delta x let us suppose d x is the that length of that elemental fluid whereas, the length of this circular pipe is capital L. Now, we need to understand what are the forces we are going to equate the forces or we are going to take it in the equilibrium condition where it is summation of all the forces will be 0 and therein you can see major forces which are acting on this are nothing but pressure force and the frictional force due to shear. The direction of shear force will be or frictional force will be opposite to the direction of flow. So, if the flow is we have mentioned if the flow is moving from this direction to this one then the application of shear stress or frictional force will be opposite to it. Coming to pressure force, pressure force will be which is always equal and opposite then if at this point pressure force is P into A pressure into area if small r is the radius then area will be p into pi r square this will be the area and at point 1 or at inlet or pressure point 1 pressure force will be p into area pi r square in terms of radius after traveling a distance of d x the value of this pressure force will become p plus change in pressure p which we have considered in x direction after traveling a distance x this will be pressure again multiplying it with area you will be getting it as pressure force. So, now you can see that there are two forces which we are considering majorly first one is pressure force and second one is uh, shear of frictional force. So, here you can see now we will be doing the summation or net force will be equating or you can uh, know or calculate that the shear stress on the periphery of the cylinder will be acting in the direction opposite to the flow and for equilibrium summation of all the forces should be 0. Wherein you have seen if you have taken pressure force at inlet positive then pressure force at outlet will be negative this is nothing but the same term which we have derived previously after reaching pressure after reaching a distance covered d x over there and then this is a frictional resistance you can see shear stress shear stress will be nothing but it will be acting towards the periphery or you can say this is the resultant distance 2 pi r 
length you have calculated into the area distance d x. So, they have calculated this force shear stress into 2 pi r and this is l a into l this is area and hence you are getting shear force. Shear force will be shear stress into the area and negative sign because it acts to the opposite direction and after calculating this equation you are getting shear stress as nothing but negative of change in pressure with respect to the distance x and r by 2 where you can see that shear small r is nothing but the radius of this elemental fluid radius of this elemental fluid and then you can see shear stress is directly proportional to the radius of elemental fluid or you can see that if this is the circular pipe you are going to take and you are going to calculate the value if this is the circular path and you are supposed to calculate the change in shear stress with respect or distribution of shear stress then it is directly proportional or linearly if shear stress will increase then this radius will increase or vice versa as the radius from the center of the pipe see you can see this r is from the center of the pipe as the distance increases from the center of pipe shear stress also goes on increasing. So, there you can see if this is the axis, this is the pipe and this is the central axis then from this point it is linearly variable, shear stress is linearly variable in corresponding directions. Now, the question comes we need to take the boundary conditions. For boundary conditions you can see that at the center the pipe small r is 0. How? Because that r is being made at the central axis of the line. In the assumption you can also see. So, at the center it is at the center of the pipe this is the central axis you can see of the pipe flow and at this center r is 0 means shear stress will be 0. And then at the wall you can see at the wall of the pipe this small r turns to capital R means it is equivalent to the entire surface and hence you can see at the wall capital R will be a small r will be converting into capital R because it will be covering a entire distance and hence you can see maximum shear stress could be seen in terms of r by 2 or directly proportional to the radius of the pipe. This is again the shear stress distribution it is linearly variable we have taken or considered with the help of the cross sectional or elemental fluid at the center of the pipe we have kept it and calculated with the help of a normal equilibrium condition that is total forces acting on a fluid should be 0. This was the first point which we have covered change of shear stress or the contribution of shear stress distribution of shear stress within the viscous flow of a circular pipe. Coming to the second point for today's topic that is now we need to understand what is the velocity distribution within a circular pipe. So, you can see for velocity distribution we have calculated already or we already know that shear stress is nothing but where we have written shear stress is nothing but viscosity into rate of change of velocity with respect to the distance travel of the depth travel tau equals to mu du over dy. So, hence you can see for this viscosity of law using the Newton's viscosity of law uh, you can see tau equals to mu du over dy here we will be taking negative direction because shear stress is acting in the opposite direction. Now, we will be substituting this value to the previous value we have achieved. What we have achieved in the previous value we have achieved tau max is equal to minus change in pressure with respect to the distance x after covering radius half of the radius of the pipe and there you can substitute the value of 
normal viscosity and after substituting the value of normal viscosity you are getting it as change in velocity with respect to the radius of elemental fluid which we have taken at the center or center line of the axis of the pipe is equivalent to the minus of radius of the elemental fluid with the viscosity and the change in pressure and then you can see previously you can see this entire equation is in the terms of r and you need to calculate it is in the term of du and you need to calculate u so for calculating we need to integrate it after integrating we are getting the equation in terms of a constant now the question comes how we are supposed to remove or how we will be sub, uh, removing this constant c so c can be removed by the boundary conditions wherein you can supplace or replace small r equal to capital r and when as the small r you can see as the small r changes to capital r the velocity also changes to zero at boundary velocity is zero so there you can see you can substitute c we are going to take with the help of boundary condition and for boundary condition you are going to substitute r as capital r u as zero so here you can substitute u as zero and small r as capital r from this we have calculated the value of c as this entire term repetition of the term makes a bit confusing so i won't repeat the term c a uh, value after obtaining the value c again you need to substitute the value over the main equation and substituting in the main equation you can see it is nothing but 1 by 4 of mu then negative change in pressure with respect to the distance traveled plus there is a very important term or through which we are going to understand the velocity distribution and it is nothing but capital r square minus r square and where capital r is the radius of the pipe having the viscous flow flowing through it and small r is the elemental of fluid elemental fluid we have taken within that fluid so here you can see that u varies with the square of r's and the distribution is parabolic and you can see the distribution is parabolic or you can see at r when r will be equivalent to 0 then that will be the maximum value you are having because why it will be resulting up to capital r square so here you can see if you see the velocity distribution then at center because at center small r turns to 0 that is for the term r square minus small r square this term turns to 0 and hence it results to capital r square or with the radius of the pipe flowing through the viscous flow and hence you can channelize or recognize that within a circular pipe the maximum velocity will be obtained at the central line of the pipe now coming to the calculation if you are aware if you can calculate maximum velocity there you have calculated maximum velocity with the help of keeping r square as 0 then you will be obtaining v max then with the help of maximum velocity how you are going to calculate the average velocity or there should be a relation between average velocity or maximum velocity like if you are aware of the discharge of uh, through that particular pipe flow is having and then obviously you will be knowing the cross sectional area then with the help of this q by a you are going to calculate v and this v will be nothing but v average now we need to understand that if we are having v average then how should it is possible for us to calculate the maximum uh, velocity obtained by the pipe having the d diameter or whatever diameter you are having for that you can see uh, we are going to calculate v max for v max we have substituted this value r square as 0 so it will be maximum value so here it is given in terms of this one now you can see v max we are going to conclude with the help of previous one previously you have seen v max taking v max to another side 
u can be calculated over there as far as the r is 0 and hence this value can be calculated with the help of this one. Now, substituting the value similar value discharge average velocity q by a we have written and substituting q as certain value you get a resultant in terms of rate of flow. But now, this is the elemental rate of flow which you are obtaining for the entire rate of flow through this pipe you need to integrate it. After integrating you are getting it as pi by 4 pi by 8 mu in terms of mu and r to the power 4. Therefore, average velocity substituting this value of q we have already seen q by a will be giving you the average velocity. So, we have calculated q from this after substituting q by a, a is pi r square and then you are getting v average as this one. Now, sub v max is nothing but you have written v max is nothing but this 3.1 equation divided by v average and it is nothing but 1 by 2. See it is 1 by 8 over here and previously you can see it is 1 by 4 entire expression is same and hence there comes a relation mathematical expression you can calculate while the flow is flowing through the fluid pipe. You can see V max is always be twice of the average velocity of that pipe. So, this is the third point we are going to study or we have already covered or studied. Uh, natural phenomenon within the pipe flow can only be considered in terms of discharge, velocity, shear stress, forces on pressure drop. So, all of these calculations we are making with the help of uh, these mathematical relationships. So, fourth one we are going to study how we will uh, study or about the pressure drop within the pipe flow having the viscous flow. So, for that we have already known we average from this. So, from this equation we are going to take this term out. We have taken this term out and substituted other terms in one section. Again you have got that instantaneous change in pressure with respect to the distance x. So, if you see if this was the entire section and this is the central line and you have considered and this is the length of the pipe this is for dx. So, if you are having the change in pressure that is change in pressure with respect to dx. If you are going to integrate it then this dx will be converted into entire length of L. Now, after integrating it we are getting this delta p del p change in p will be nothing but pressure at point 1 to pressure at point 2 difference will be taken dx will be getting converted into the entire length because dx is a small amount of length dx is a length and when we are going to integrate it becomes capital L and hence you are getting the equation as this one. Now, we need to calculate the loss of pressure head also then loss of pressure head when the term head comes means pressure per unit specific weight you are going to calculate. So, pressure by weight specific weight you have substituted rho g specific weight, weight is nothing but rho g substituting the rho g you are getting a final equation for calculating the pressure drop after traveling a distance from one section to other section and this is the main equation 32 mu v average v average make sure length pi g d square and this equation is known as hagen poisel equation or hagen poisel formula. So, till now we have covered 4 topics, 4 mathematical relationships we have studied in order to calculate in, or in order to get awareness of fluid flowing through a circular pipe that to that flow fluid is having viscous flow or it is flowing through a very low velocity. We have studied about the mathematical expression or summarize you can see that we have seen shear stress distribution and it is nothing but linearly. If you remember we have seen that distribution is 
linear from the center of the pipe. Now, velocity distribution is parabolic, pressure drop is in the terms of 32 mu v, we are going to substitute as average L upon rho g d square. Again and the fourth one we what we have studied relationship between the maximum velocity and the average velocity which is nothing but V max is 2 times of V average. Although this entire lecture covers only the mathematical expressions or mathematical values calculations nothing more conceptual a bit of mathematics is applied over there and few laws like summation of net forces. Now, we can go for a simple a very simple numerical. So, that this entire mathematical relationship which we have derived can be proved or can be utilized with a good setup. So, you can see read the question a crude oil of viscosity means you are given mu as how much 0 0.97 and it is in poise after converting into Newton second per meter square it will be divide by 10. Then again it is having a relative density of 0.9, relative density means specific gravity is 0 0.9. With the help of specific gravity or relative density you can calculate the density of the fluid, density of crude oil. multiplying this with the standard fluid that is water, it will be 1000 and hence it will be 900 kg per meter cube. All right. Then again it is moving through a horizontal pipe of diameter 100 mm converting into the standard value diameter will be 0.1 meters and length 10 meters. L you are given it as 10 meters. Now, we need to calculate the difference of pressure at the two end of the pipe if 100 kg of the oil is collected in 30 seconds. Now, what you are given? You need to calculate the pressure. Pressure formula which we are having 32 mu is given to you, velocity is not known to you, length is given to you, rho g is a constant, rho we have calculated with the help of specific gravity g is there, d diameter is there with you. The question comes how you are going to calculate this v average. <coughs> v average for, uh, for v average you can see that mass per unit time is given to you. It is how much? 100 kg per 30 seconds and there you can see that q by a. A is given to you and hence V will be nothing but Q by A and then you can calculate with the help of area pi by 4 d square. From this point you can calculate Q. From this Q to this Q we can see that Q and A will be giving you V. After achieving V, then the equation is simple. We are aware P 1 minus P 2 is nothing but 32 mu V average L by 0 d square. See mu is given to you. Then again V we have calculated previously with the help of this relationship Q and then further Q with the help of Q and A we are calculating V and then L is given to you, length is given to you as 10 meters and then G gravity density we have calculated with the help of specific gravity and then D is given as 100 mm which we have converted into meters and hence you can calculate the required pressure drop with it. So, this was a simple uh, mathematical calculation for the fluid flow within it. 
in this case we have covered uh, the viscous flow or fluid within a circular pipe in next lecture we will be studying about the flow within the two parallel plates thank you